Well, I'm Wolfgang Becker. I'm based in Aachen in Germany on the borders to Belgium and the Netherlands. Uh, we are sitting in uh, a Museum of Contemporary Art, the Ludwig Forum, uh, which uh, I founded in 1990. And uh, I'm engaged at the moment uh, with a project uh, of Daniel Rothbard, uh, who will uh, perform here at one of the hot springs of Aachen, uh, which in the past have made this city rather famous. I was raised in a family of the perfumery industry. And uh, my first aesthetic experiences were those of the nose. Uh, my father experienced uh, a nose experiments with me where I had to close my eyes and uh, check which scent I was receiving through my nose. Evidently, it was not enough and I uh, hated the business of my father and I wanted to experience aesthetic uh, wonders through my eyes. I remember that uh, I met people who taught me to paint and to draw and uh, to make woodcuts. When I regard them now, I laugh, uh, uh, but uh, I uh, I think that they were my first experiences. But my father forced me into the uh, perfumery industry and I became uh, a traveling representative of a big cologne firm of 4711. And I discovered myself uh, uh, traveling to many places and looking for museums and churches, uh, wherever I could, could find uh, some experiences about art. And more and more I was surrounded by books about art. And when I had a terrible traffic accident with a, uh, uh, with a consequence on my health, which drove me into the bed for several weeks in a dark room, I convinced my mother that I didn't follow the right way of profession and that I should change uh, and I would like to change and study art history. And she tried to convince my father, but my father was a strict opponent and so I had to do that against him uh, looking for money at other places, so I started to make uh, guided tours through the city of Cologne and earned enough money to rent a little apartment myself and to study art history. And slowly but slowly, uh, my father was convinced to follow me. <clears throat> and I studied in uh, Cologne, in Bonn and in Paris. And in Paris, I did my doctor thesis, which uh, uh, has uh, had as a consequence this wonderful thick book about Paris and German painting from 1770 to 1840. And in Paris, uh, as a student, uh, I was introduced uh, to contemporary art by several artists. I met uh, a German sculptor, Brigitte Maczynski, uh, <clears throat> who uh, at that time introduced me to several artists around. And as a young, nice man, she introduced me 
uh, in the Louvre at a certain moment to a painter whom I admired, uh, to Francis Bacon. And I will never forget this uh, encounter with Francis Bacon, who approached me with a big smell of whiskey around him and uh, put his right arm over my shoulder and asked me some very personal questions. And I was terribly shocked and uh, thought this is a really great artist. This is a genius with all the flair and the scent and the smell of a great artist. In Cologne, uh, my girlfriend and uh, uh, later my first wife, uh, Evelyn Weiss, uh, started a career in the Walraff Richards Museum uh, <clears throat> as a volunteer, whilst I worked uh, as a publicity manager for the city of Cologne. Uh, and that was around uh, 68, 69, when Cologne had a tremendous uh, flowering of contemporary art with the foundation of the first art market, the art fair, uh, and a, a sudden flowering of galleries which means that between one year and the next uh, there were about uh, 100 new galleries in the city introducing contemporary art. And so my task was uh, mainly to propagate contemporary art in the city of Cologne. And her task was uh, to introduce modern contemporary art into the museum. And that was even in the 60s uh, a, re a revolutionary act because uh, the museums followed an iron rule that no living artist and no work of a living artist should be shown in a museum. Uh, and they were approached, these museums directors were approached by an at that time unknown collector in Aachen Peter Ludwig, who up to then had only collected uh, works of medieval art, of Greek antiquity, of um, illuminated manuscripts, and who had started in 66 in the United States to buy American modern art. And he was introduced to those directors by the uh, restorer of the museum, uh, Wolfgang Hahn, who himself was a collector of contemporary art and the wildest of contemporary art. He uh, collected uh, at that time Tangerly and Twombly and Dieter Rode and Joseph Beuys. Uh, uh, so his collection uh, was famous as a kind of horror cabinet. Uh, and the two of them convinced the directors of the Cologne Museum to make a first exhibition of the Ludwig collection. And there I met uh, Peter Ludwig and we convinced him that uh, the artist Wolf Fostel should do the catalogue. And uh, uh, Fostel designed uh, a wonderful book uh, in plexiglass cover, uh, which is now uh, an object of collecting. Uh, the uh, uh, catalog of the Ludwig collection. And uh, Evelyn, my girlfriend, had to do it as a catalog uh, uh, art historian. And I helped her. So this was the work of our evenings and days. Um, and so we met. And uh, Ludwig, as a businessman, was very interested in my career because I had 
a business career in the perfumery industry. Uh, I was working in the publicity uh, for contemporary art and I was a promoted art historian. So this was perfect uh, uh, for a man who sought somebody uh, who should install a museum of contemporary art in his hometown in Aachen. And he invited me to come and convinced the city council to engage me. And so I started my work in Aachen very quickly in 1969. Uh, well, the first artist uh, whose address I had uh, when I went to New York uh, was Nancy Graves because uh, she had uh, sold two of her camels, uh, camel sculptures uh, to Ludwig, uh, which we had exhibited uh, and we were preparing a big exhibition uh, of uh, exotic work uh, and uh, Nancy uh, lived in Mulberry Street and uh, she had told me uh, I should come at first instance to her and she would then uh, bring me to places uh, and um, I remember that the taxi driver didn't want to bring me to her house uh, because Mulberry Street was a very, very dirty, dangerous place. Uh, and so uh, uh, I, took, I took my uh, uh, Boy Scouts knife, which I had with me, uh, in my hands and went through Mulberry Street and uh, knocked at the door and I saw a big staircase going up to her apartment, which was abs absolutely unusual in, uh, in Europe uh, to, to see such a big staircase. And uh, uh, I uh, greeted her and uh, she looked at me and laughed and said, you must have been very much afraid. Huh? <laughs> and I said, oh, certainly I was. Uh, and she said, well, you know, I had alarmed all the people in the street that you would come. So there was no danger at all. There was one guardian at each corner for you. <laughs> uh, so that's uh, my first impression of New York. And it continued because whenever uh, uh, I took then part at parties of artists in their lofts uh, and went home, uh, 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 through the streets of downtown, I uh, continue to be uh, very much afraid. And uh, mm, I remember that suddenly at a certain moment I got some relief because a man in the street uh, went to the other side of the street when he saw me. And I asked uh, my friends, why, why did he, uh, was he afraid of me? And they said, yes, you had a blue blazer with golden uh, bottoms on it. And this is like a police uniform. <laughs> uh, she introduced me to Phil Glass. And Phil Glass, uh, who uh, prepared uh, a travel to Europe, invited me uh, to stay uh, for a fortnight in his apartment and to f feed his cat. That's what I did. And it, it, that was a typical downtown apartment. And I met the first time in my life, I met cockroaches. Um, yeah, and I met, uh, uh, I met groups of artists uh, uh, like uh, <coughs> Gordon Matter Clark uh, uh, introduced me to his friends. Uh, well, I must say, uh, Phil Glass uh, invited me to his friends who played with him, who made music, and uh, he introduced me to Steve Reich, uh, uh, who some houses away uh, had another group of uh, uh, people playing music. 
uh, and uh, uh, Gordon Mata Clark invited me and brought me to Laurie Anderson, uh, and uh, so I met a whole uh, a circle of this generation uh, who was starting to engage in uh, new technologies. I met Namjoon Paik, uh, whom I had met before in Cologne, uh, because he was a friend of Wolf Fostel, uh, and uh, I prepared an exhibition with Wolf Fostel. Uh, I remember this uh, nice anecdote that Namjoon Paik, uh, who lived near Cologne at that time, in a cheap uh, apartment, had to move out, and he phoned me and said, Wolfgang, uh, I have a prepared piano here in my apartment, and I don't know where to put it. Uh, would you like to have it? And I lived in a narrow apartment, too, and I, idiot, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't accept this donation of Namjoon Paik. Otherwise, I would have now one of these wonderful prepared pianos of him. <clears throat> uh, Gordon Mata Clark uh, uh, came over to Aachen and uh, he had at that time uh, photographed the New York subway and the graffiti on the subway and he had prepared a big photoglyph of uh, about 60 feet long of black and white photographs uh, uh, put together and then uh, uh, he had covered uh, the uh, graffiti with uh, uh, some traces of silver uh, color uh, to pronounce them. And uh, at that time we pre presented them in Aachen uh, as uh, a contribution of the museum to a new movement of graffiti which we could observe in our city too. We had here uh, a couple of uh, two graffiti writers uh, who became later rather famous, uh, uh, Klaus pa Payer and Walter Stör, uh, and whose work is now I'm helping to uh, to keep it up and uh, to prepare a kind of documentation of it. Uh, and Gordon then went to Paris uh, to do this cutting up of a house near the newly built uh, Centre Pompidou. I think that we were, most of us were completely oriented to New York uh, and uh, many of uh, the artists uh, of West Germany uh, oriented themselves uh, towards New York and uh, tried to find their own way uh, with a view to New York. So this was for uh, the young people like Gerhard Richter or Sigmar Polke or uh, Wolf Fostel who really fought against Robert Rauschenberg because uh, people reproached him that he was too near to Robert Rauschenberg. So he had to do something else uh, uh, to not to be too near. Uh, the openness uh, of the New York scene, the experimental level and uh, the social involvement of the artist at that time was so exemplary that New York really was the capital of uh, contemporary art and it was uh, there was no competition with Paris. Paris was regarded as a beautiful, nostalgic place uh, where contemporary art had taken place in the 50s, uh, but now it was uh, in New York and uh, it, it was um, a general enthusiasm not only for the arts but uh, 
uh, for the whole of America and uh, the hero of most Europeans and most Germans was, uh, was Kennedy. <laughs> We loved all Kennedy, and we, uh, Kennedy stood uh, uh, for uh, America uh, like uh, we love, most of us love Barack Obama today, and he stands for America. And he is, compared to Kennedy, he is a tragic figure because he stands uh, uh, for an America uh, which tries to creep up uh, of big, big problems, and uh, Kennedy had, uh, was lucky because uh, America had other problems, uh, but certainly not those uh, which Barack Obama meets now. Uh, there were some artworks. Uh, uh, there were the films by Andy Warhol. Uh, there was uh, the Buckminster Fuller map by Jasper Jones. Uh, there were some combined paintings by Rauschenberg. And then following was uh, this Richard painting by Chuck Close, which you see here, and the Camels by Nancy Graves, they were the most, and they still are, the most interesting works of new realism. I might add, perhaps, uh, uh, The Supermarket Lady by Duane Hanson. Uh, I mean, this hyper-realism, uh, which at that time grew out of pop art uh, was so special and uh, so irritating um, and put so many questions about what art is or what art can be uh, uh, that uh, yeah we loved them uh, we really loved them and uh, I remember we took the supermarket lady out into a supermarket and put her for one hour at a, at a cash uh, uh, exit of the supermarket and filmed the people uh, who passed by her. And to our astonishment, very many people uh, uh, perceived her, did see that she was an artwork, uh, but regarded her as uh, one of those people who run by here. Uh, that was really a great experience, this illusionary uh, effect which art can have, uh, which is now uh, 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 antique, uh, nostalgic, because uh, uh, we fight uh, in our television images with uh, high density and 3D effects. Uh, so the simulacrum is very easy to create. You need not do big sculptures for that. As most of the Ludwig collection at that time was American, uh, and as uh, this Ludwig collection was invited to present itself at many places, uh, uh, and I had a comp uh, to accompany this uh, uh, collection to exhibitions, I regarded myself as a kind of ambassador of American art in Europe. And uh, I was invited uh, to Paris uh, in the 70s uh, as the German commissioner of the uh, Paris Biennial. And this was a special biennial compared to Venice. It was a biennial for young artists. <clears throat> and uh, the general secretary, George Boudaille, uh, reformed uh, 
the uh, Committee of National Commissaries into an international committee. Uh, so uh, we were all together to choose the artist who would contribute to the biennial. My task was no more to choose the German artist. Uh, I could propose the German artist, but uh, then the committee uh, chose them. Uh, and as Aachen is not very far from Paris, uh, I was very often in Paris and uh, I introduced a lot of German artists to the young German artists to the uh, Paris Biennial and I took many, many uh, artists of the Paris Biennial to Aachen to exhibit their works here. So this connection uh, was a very practical connection uh, uh, because uh, this was a car drive of five hours to go to Paris and to go back. One, sometimes I went uh, in the morning and came back in the evening. <clears throat> uh, and this uh, connection um, determined uh, the exhibition program of the Neue Gallery. And I mean, Paris shared with me the interest in American art. Uh, and don't forget that uh, Iliana Sonnabend at that time had a very good gallery in Paris and lived in Paris. And we went uh, to Paris to Iliana Sonnabend uh, to see what she exhibited. And Ludwig bought from Iliana Sonnabend's uh, Paris gallery uh, many works of American art. The Neue Gallery was in so far a very strange place uh, as it was housed uh, in uh, uh, a casino place of the 18th century. And the main hall uh, was a ballroom uh, with crystal chandeliers uh, uh, and reliefs on uh, the white walls. Uh, uh, a real festivity hall. And it was very funny to uh, uh, make installations, uh, video installations, and give concerts. Uh, uh, when Phil Glass made with his group a concert in that hall, it was really amazing to see the, them uh, uh, sitting around the keyboards uh, in the middle uh, under a big uh, uh, crystal chandelier from Vienna. Mm. And it was a uh, experiment, an experimental city museum with a very small budget, uh, but uh, uh, living on the partnership with Peter Ludwig, housing the Ludwig collection, preparing exhibitions of the Ludwig uh, of the Ludwig collection elsewhere. Uh, sending out traveling exhibitions, uh, receiving uh, the new works of the Ludwig collection regularly and exhibiting them and uh, evaluating them, uh, publicizing them. Uh, and uh, whenever uh, uh, the municipal budget wouldn't uh, uh, be enough, uh, uh, the task would be to go to Mr. Ludwig and ask him to help. And that worked well. Uh, so uh, uh, we had uh, a lot of communication troubles, but uh, uh, we became friends in that time uh, and uh, worked closely together. So. Uh, whenever I did an exhibition of an artist, the artist could hope that Ludwig would buy from that exhibition for the collection. Uh, and otherwise, uh, when uh, Ludwig bought something, uh, he could expect that I would exhibit it. Uh, though this did not always function, uh, because uh, he gave me the liberty to protest and say, this I will put into uh, the depot at once. <laughs> uh, 
And Ludwig uh, uh, had his uh, chocolate factory. He was uh, very engaged as a businessman, uh, but it was uh, near to uh, the museum. Uh, so we could exchange ideas uh, daily uh, and uh, he could decide uh, to buy this or that daily. Uh, you know, uh, when I started my job, I was invited uh, by a congress of art historians uh, uh, on uh, uh, the Lake of Constance uh, in southern Germany. Uh, to do a uh, speech about the Ludwig collection. And uh, I did a comparison uh, between uh, uh, the rapidity of change in fashion uh, and in art, which seemed uh, at that moment, around 1970, uh, an interesting point of view because uh, there were trends uh, in the art market which changed uh, very quickly. So the introduction of pop art uh, was uh, a period of five years and then suddenly came uh, photorealism and that was a period of three years and conceptual art, another trend uh, coming up and uh, going over the Western world. Uh, and uh, when I compared that, I had a, uh, a very not a notorious museum director from Hamburg who from behind stood up and said, uh, would you like the idea uh, that uh, your art, which you are representing, which you are propagating here, uh, is uh, dependent on taste uh, like the chocolate of the man who pays for it? And everybody laughed in the hall. And uh, I said, yes, I think so. Uh, uh, and um, from that moment on, I loved the uh, uh, idea uh, and the slogan, Pop au chocolat, which appeared first in a French newspaper. Uh, I think it was in the circle of Pierre Restani, uh, uh, where it was, maybe it was even Pierre Restani uh, who at that time invented this word. Yes, I liked it. The exhibition which had the biggest uh, controversial social impact uh, was uh, uh, this exhibition, uh, the fourth exhibition which I did in the Neue Gallery. Komme Mall is uh, uh, the name for Commission Mixte de la Mémoire uh, uh, des Monuments aux Morts. Uh, and it was a study of Robert Filiou uh, about war monuments. And uh, we uh, concentrated it on the region of around Aachen. So we took uh, monuments of uh, the Belgian part, the Dutch part, and the German part. And uh, uh, we photographed them and exchanged their sites and uh, made manifestations of this in Liège in Belgium, in Maastricht in the Netherlands, and in Aachen. And we made questionnaires and uh, asked people what they thought about that, exchanging war monuments in the regions. 
and uh, we evaluated uh, uh, the opinions of the people. And it was quite, uh, quite strange that uh, the Belgians uh, uh, were, let me say, they hated the idea because they said it is an insult to the veterans of the war. And uh, Robert Filiou, the French artist, uh, had to defend himself uh, uh, against many critics in uh, the Belgian region here. When we went to Maastricht with this manifestation, uh, we found uh, a lot of young people who had passed through the military service uh, who offered uh, to engage the technical service of the Dutch military uh, to realize transportation. They were quite uh, open to the idea and it would have been easy to exchange the monuments. And the German public in uh, Aachen and the region up to Cologne and Dusseldorf took the whole manifestation for art. So it had no consequence at all. Uh, many people smiled and laughed. And for the people engaged in the project, it was very moving to see these differences because they made a lesson about how people can receive art information uh, as a, a social commentary, as an aesthetic, aesthetical lesson, or as a recipe to do something. And therefore, I think uh, even today, uh, this is one exhibition which I uh, will always remember. Of course, uh, <clears throat> uh, it started uh, uh, in uh, the Rhineland uh, uh, because Ludwig had uh, bought uh, works of East German artists. And uh, I had ex uh, exhibited a collection of these works of uh, East German artists around in 1979. Uh, and uh, this exhibition had uh, a very mixed up uh, echo. Many conservative people loved it. Uh, and uh, because uh, these East German artists seemed to reproduce uh, uh, the conservative virtues of art, very good uh, drawing, very good paint, oil painting, uh, uh, very recognizable images, uh, no abstract. Uh, uh, and other people hated it because they thought uh, this is indoctrinated art and this is state art. And so we had a big discussion. And then the Russian ambassador Semyonov uh, phoned uh, uh, Ludwig uh, and asked him if he would like to continue these activities in Moscow and uh, Leningrad. And uh, I was invited by Semyonov to come to Bonn and to look at the work of two artists uh, which he had in the embassy because he uh, showed himself as an art collector of, uh, of his own and I uh, met the works uh, by uh, Dmitry Shilinsky and his wife the Shilinskaya and so we started uh, <coughs> travels uh, uh, to Russia and Ludwig collected. And all these uh, 
travels which then went uh, to Romania, to Czechoslovakia, uh, to Bulgaria. Uh, all these travels uh, were travels into unknown provinces of uh, the world, which I had never met before. And I was uh, extremely curious uh, what would happen to me. Uh, how would I feel? Uh, uh, and uh, I dived into a kind of very difficult atmosphere uh, full of hiding and secrets uh, uh, and uh, uh, things which could not be said openly uh, but could be uh, uh, announced or uh, you had to guess what it means, what it is, uh, uh, what the image really wants to say. And for me it was extremely exciting uh, to dive into this world and uh, uh, to find a world where no category of those which I have learned before uh, was still valid. Even collecting art uh, was a, a strange adventure because nobody, nobody of the artists knew what the price of his works would be. He didn't know uh, what he should ask uh, when this brutal collector of the West uh, whose renown was that he had millions of dollars, uh, what he would say if this collector would say, can I buy it? How much is it? I remember that one of the wonderful uh, Russian Jewish painters whom Ludwig asked, uh, uh, to buy three, five paintings, uh, he said, what do you offer? And we knew he didn't know. So Ludwig offered a small price. And the painter said, you know, Mr. Ludwig, I'll give them to you as a present. And that was such an insult that Ludwig got a red face <clears throat> and went out. And he came again the next day and the two of them became friends and Ludwig sold him, uh, bought him some of the paintings which are now in his collection at a decent price. Uh, so all these experiences were like uh, uh, going into another time uh, and therefore uh, I look back at this period uh, with uh, great fascination and I I suppose that Ludwig bought many many of those paintings uh, which with the times will disappear but there are some between them uh, which will survive, uh, which are really uh, artworks of the same aesthetical value than many of uh, works of the West. I loved them. Uh, and uh, yes, I still love them. Uh, at a certain moment, uh, after uh, we had uh, lived through a period uh, of uh, 
uh, of revolutionary art in uh, which uh, painting, drawing were nearly banished. Uh, to be a painter was uh, was a bad word. Uh, and suddenly there they came again. There were some people who took a brush and painted. And that was wonderful. Uh, I mean, uh, painting is uh, such a wonderful thing because you need no more than your brains and your arm and your finger and your hand and a brush and, uh, and a cheap piece of uh, textile. Uh, and uh, they painted like doing a performance. Uh, 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 some of them painted even in front of the public. Uh, uh, and you could look uh, how they painted. They took very cheap color and they took very cheap canvas. Uh, uh, and uh, they showed uh, uh, the joy of painting. Um, or the joy of, uh, 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 of using anything on a canvas. Uh, so uh, they mixed it with music. Uh, you could see the joy of it in uh, the media. Uh, uh, I remember that uh, uh, the New York artist uh, Robert Kushner at the opening of the exhibition uh, made a performance uh, as a belly dancer uh, in uh, oriental clothes uh, and veils uh, with the oriental music. Uh, so it was a enormous emotional and sensual uh, experience which was new because uh, everything which had happened before was cold, was uh, going through the media, was going through machines, uh, and here it was again. The person, it was palpable, it, you could touch her, and you could touch a painting, and you could smell uh, the, the paint, the acrylic, the oil uh, on the canvas. Yes, I loved them. <laughs>